in today's video, I am going to be cooking this. <laughs> yes, I am going to be cooking a Christmas dinner in my motorhome. I get a lot of questions. You may have asked me some of the questions and I may have answered them. If you have any questions, then do feel free to drop them in the comments below and I'll try and get to them. But one of the big questions I do get is, what do you cook? How do you cook in the motorhome? home? What meals can you cook? Can you cook normal meals? It's just endless amounts of questions about food when really I have a normal oven, a normal cooker top. I have a smaller fridge than most people, but I can cook pretty much everything. But in today's video, as it's getting very festive, 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 we're just about to come into December. So, I wanted to do a show you guys that you can cook a Christmas dinner in a motorhome. Now, I'm not going to go all out from scratch. That doesn't mean I'm going to get a ready meal. <laughs> but what I mean is I'm not going to go out and bar. I'm not going to go out and like just get a potato and then peel it and all this and that. No, I ain't got time for that. I'm probably going to cook a roast chicken because it's going to be too big. A turkey could be too big. And to be fair, a turkey, it's not the best, is it? You know, I know it's tradition, but I like a chicken more. So I'm going to cook a chicken and probably another joint of meat, which I'm not too sure yet. I haven't been to the shops yet, but I'm going to cook them with this, the meter plus. So stick around, watch the video because you're going to uh, see me do some cooking. Um, should look good, hopefully. And I'm going to give you, you, you the chance to win one of these. And I've got five, five, five of these to give away and they will be to you before Christmas so you can use it on your own Christmas dinner or you can give it to someone as a gift so make sure you stick around to the end when I'll be giving these away like I said I get questions all the time about cooking and what can you cook what can't you cook there's not really much you can't I mean obviously this is a prime example uh, I'm not gonna be able to cook a full massive sized turkey and I won't be able to put one in my fridge anyway so there's uh yeah there's a there's something I can't cook a massive turkey but I could cook a turkey crown or something like that that wouldn't be a problem um so you just gotta there's you know give and take a little bit here and there but apart from that I mean you you could make a lasagna you could do shepherd's pie you can make pancakes you do a full English Let's talk and let's go buy some food. Filming Tesco's, he thought. <laughs> I picked a Saturday. What a day to pick. Heads up down the nappy aisle because it's quiet down here. <laughs> the shop's rammed and I'm trying to film. And people are just looking at me left, right and centre. <laughs> All the festive treats. Right, we're running around uh, <laughs> like a blue ass flying. Not really sure where to go and what to do. So I just normally buy little bits and bobs every now and again, but right, we've got a uh, chicken that we're gonna roast. I've got a joint of gammon. Uh, I'm gonna roast that as well. Got some cauliflower cheese, got some stuffing balls, roast potatoes, chipolatas. We've got some parsnips, got some token vegetables. Got some onions, got some gravy, and we got bread sauce. The reason behind not like buying proper potatoes, because I could do it, I could buy potatoes, I could buy carrots, I could buy it all, parsnips, peel them all, boil them up, then throw them in the oven, roast them, no problems. But there's a few reasons why I'm not doing that. One, uses water. We're obviously van life, we conserve them. So. Two, it's gonna make the motorhome all steam and condensation from boiling the water and then pouring that water away, which is pointless. Um, and three, these are such an easy clean up. I mean, I just got to chuck them in the oven and come on, roast potatoes with beef dripping. Who does not want that in their life? Put them in the oven, bosh, done. I've got loads of gear. <laughs> Have I got any idea? I'm not too sure, but let's pay for this. And then back to the van. Shopping all got. Now let's get back to the motorhome and cook us a Christmas dinner. Right, before we start the Christmas dinner, I'll just quickly show you what I've got cooking facilities wise. Because I know a lot of you ask, what do I cook, how do I cook, da -da -da -da. So, let me give you a quick rundown. We have the air fryer. I will be using that for one thing, just to demonstrate the meter in the air fryer. So we will be using that. 
Then we've got a hob with three gas and one electric. There's my kettle. It took a bit of a bash the other day. It fell off the side. Look at that. We got my oven. Needs a bit of a clean. <laughs> Don't hate me for that. <laughs> it's a used oven. Right, we're not all fancy on this channel. You know me. So we've got a grill. That's got my, my pan in. And then we've got the oven, which has got my trays and another big pan and a few little uh, bits and bobs. Yeah, we're gonna have to be a bit creative. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the oven on straight away, preheat that sucker, get that up to heat, and we've got to try and jiggle the oven to be able to fit everything in. So we've got the chicken ready to go in, be a nice roast chicken. We've got these lovely beef dripping roast potatoes, and I've got some carrots and parsnips to go in with them. I'll just uh, maybe move them over a bit, put them in at the same time. We've got this honey cured gammon joint. That's gonna go in the air fryer uh, with a meter and that's gonna go in the oven with a meter. Then we've got these uh, pork and sage and onion stuffing balls. Got some pigs in blankets. Who doesn't love a pig in blanket? And we've got the cauliflower cheese. I'm sure we can figure it out though. I'm sure we can figure it out. Yeah, somehow. <laughs> I've got a little bit of room there, so if need be, if I'm finding hard for space, I could chuck some of these there if I divide it with a bit of tin foil or something to not contaminate and mix. And these only take 20, 25 minutes, and that's got to rest. This is the meter app, and this is the meter plus, so we should be able to take it out, and that should pop up on there when it connects. There we go, that one's uh, there and ready to go. First we'll click uh, to set up a cook. So this will have to go in, past this line here, into the chicken. Now that's tap to set a cook up. Um, we are doing poultry, we're doing a chicken, we're doing a whole chicken, and we want it medium well. And then that's what uh, the temperature it's got to get to in the middle. So now, if, that's right. You should be able to see it here. So what I'm going to do is just take this and then just pop it in. Hold the chicken, pop it in. Now the beautiful part of this is this end will also measure the outside temperature and then the other end will measure the inside temperature. Let's get ready to go. So we'll click start cook. So then it shows you how to insert it. There we go. So we're in there, we've done that. Um, that's what we've done exactly like that and there's the bird yeah we've done that click start cook keep it uh close by that's what we'll do we'll leave that there that won't be far again yep yeah, start cook so that's the internal temperature of the chicken and that's the outside temperature here of my motorhome oven is nice and hot in she goes. Now I haven't read the instructions on that bag of chicken at all. You know, I know how to cook a chicken, um, but I haven't read anything, so I don't know the weight of that chicken. I don't know how, how long I'm meant to cook it. The ambient temperature's going up because it's uh, nice and hot in the oven. This will work it all out for us and then it'll tell us when to take it off and rest. How easy is that? Don't even have to worry about it. It will tell us what's going on. We know the temperature of our oven. So even if our oven dial is not exact, we can see because of the meter probe. It's all good. And this is the gammon joint. I'm going to do this in the air fryer. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get the next meter and we're going to put it in here. Nothing needs doing to this. This is already prepared. And then we're going to pop that in the air fryer. That's cooking a whole chicken, as we can see. We'll pop this one off and that one should connect to there. There we go, that one's ready to go. So what we'll do is we'll go through it again. So we'll go set up a cook. Uh, we're doing pork. Uh, we're doing a roast. And we're doing a gammon. Uh, medium well. Just to make sure. And then we're going to click start. And it's going to show us where to put it. 
Okay, so we're going to put it straight in. See, now it says go in at the side there. Now, I'm not sure about that. I think I'm going to go in here because I want to keep it away as low from the, the cooking element. Now, this one is going to go here because we are next to the air fryer. There we go. There we go. Now on the instructions it did say 170. So we're going to do 170 and it said about an hour. But we're going to do it say for 45 minutes. We've just had an update on that one. We've now got an estimated cooking time for the chicken. So we'll have a look at that in a moment. Let's click go on that one and we'll see where that one gets to. Because the air fryer is a metal cage basically, it can act like a Faraday cage I've been told. So it can reduce the the talk, uh, the, the signal strength. Right, let's have a look, see what our chicken says. 49 minutes. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to lower the temperature because we're at 230 degrees to about there. Take the edge off that skin. So now we've got the whole chicken and the gammon. We've not got an estimated yet on the gammon. But we're already at 80 degrees in the air fryer. See, no boiling water. It's not steamy in here at the moment. I've got a little crack on, I've got the window cracked open a little bit. I've got the max fan just a little bit. And uh, yeah, all good in the hood. I haven't done all the sage and stuffing balls. Pigs in blankets can't help myself. And then I've got the cauliflower cheese. So they'll go in shortly. They're gonna go in now. This is where we are on the cooks. Uh, the gammon's still estimating. Now, one thing's good to know is I've set that to 170 and it's good to see that it's at 176 so it's really pretty close to the temperature. There we go. So let's have a little look. Oh, there we go. That's cooking well. Once the chicken's out, I'm going to put the, the pigs in blankets in and the cauliflower cheese in because they only take about 20 minutes, half hour and the chicken will be resting at that point. Um, yeah we'll get the gammon going now i will say cooking a gammon in an air fryer is quite a waste of energy um it's going to take a long time it is quite a waste of energy but i just wanted to show you guys that you can cook you can use the meter in a varied of uh, options i showed you during the summer when i was using it to cook a pork joint on the barbecue and that was absolutely amazing that was just on the on the weather that i've got you can do pretty much anything you want with the uh, thing and you ain't gonna burn your food you're gonna have perfect food every time <laughs> that one's saying remove from heat remove from heat let's have a look that's both the meats out resting good to go the gammon joint is now ready to slice and to eat it has come up to 70 degrees 71 degrees it's reached the internal it kept going whilst it was off the heat potatoes and all that in there they're almost done gonna start dishing this onto a nice big plate and make it look banging and then i can serve it while we're waiting for the potatoes and that to cook it's competition time ha 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 look i have got five Whoa. i know not everyone's on instagram i apologize but you know youtube doesn't allow me to message individual people so it has to be on instagram so head on over to my instagram you have to follow me follow meter and then leave a comment on this post because the software i use to pick someone at random will check if you followed someone if you followed me if you followed them and you've left a comment if you haven't done all three of them the software will just reject you and it won't count you as an entry who needs it tag people who who burns all their meat tag people who cannot cook i want you to tag everyone you know you can't cook you need one of these and then they can enter you know everyone can enter the competition it's open to everyone make sure like i say you follow me on instagram you follow meter and you leave a comment of what you're going to use the meter for or who you're going to give it to the competition will close on friday the 9th of december at 1 p.m i will then make uh i'll then video myself doing the draw and i'll post that on my instagram for everyone to see and then i'll message everyone um i'll give you until the weekend to reply to my message and send me all your details where i'm going to send them and then um if you don't reply to me within like 48 hours then i'll move on to so i'll randomly pick someone else um because i need to get them uh ready and packaged to then ship out so they arrive before christmas do not follow anyone that says they are me 
on any social accounts when I do these these competitions. People do try and scammers do try and imitate me. I will only ever announce the winners of these competitions with a video on my Instagram on the given date that I've stated in the terms and conditions of that competition. I'll never ask you for money. I pay all the postage. I'll never ask you to contact me on Telegram. I will only ever post the, the winners on Instagram and then I'll directly DM them myself. If anyone thinks they're being contacted by me, ask them for a video. Say, can you say my name in a video? And if they can't, it's not me. Do not get scammed by anyone trying to imitate me. Good luck. Now, when it comes to removing these, obviously they do get quite wedged in there. So the best thing to do is to push them in a little bit more and twist and, and then pull from the silver and then just gently rock it out and it'll just come out like that piece of cake. And obviously that is hot, so be careful. Pop that down. Look at that. Perfect. Just perfect. Oh yeah. Perfect. Look at that. So, you see the juices on that. Perfect chicken. The potatoes are just crisping up. They're not the best potatoes to be fair, but you know, it was the first time trying them once. Kettle's on the boil, ready for the bread sauce and the gravy. Uh, the veggies in the pot. Um, they're all boring things, not really much to show on them. And yeah, I thought, uh, the, uh, the main reason I've done this video was one, to show you you can cook massive dinners in, in, in a mobile home, no problem. Two, I wanted to show you how good the, uh, the, the meter is uh, in various different settings. I've shown you in the summer uh, on the barbecue, now I've shown you in the air fryer and on the in the oven. And free to give it away, why not? You know, little Christmas bonus. Look at that. Christmas dinner in a motorhome, done. <laughs> now, I'm gonna scoff my face. You will head on over to Instagram for your chance to win a meter. Cheers, guys. I wanna say a massive shout out to Meter for giving us the probes to give away. Legends, yeah. No, that didn't work.